don't think they're on the top of the handling either, Jason. It's just the pack is so small. Uh, Kevin's smart, you know, he knows about half or three quarters of the pack will stay up there. The back guy, you can't pass at the bottom. You know, he just needs two more cars to be able to get it done. Okay, I'm thinking about, thinking about putting a little tape on it here. I could do some wedge with it. All right. Yeah, we can talk about the just when you get it. family only sprints can feed them all join the family at sprint.com slash speed two segments down by joy 20 laps to go this should be the final pit stop of the night steve greg biffle says his car is pretty good they're going to add some tape to the nose of that ford make a chassis adjustment martin Truex jr saying his only shot to win is to ride with the 20 or the 14 krista gil martin crew chief for kevin harvick reminding his crew a normal pit stop don't do anything we wouldn't normally do. They're changing the four tires. The most important thing, Kevin Harvick said, I have no issues. Matt? Tony Stewart's car so impressive tonight. He says the car, though, free on entry through center of the corner. He said, you need to really tighten me up because this next segment is going to be very ornery. Thank you, folks. Now, the cars are stationary because NASCAR will line them up in the order in which they entered pit road. So a no gain, no loss of position pit stop. Everybody taking a little extra time before we run the final 20 laps on Saturday night in Daytona Beach. All right. If you're. Dead or alive, extreme. I bet Two. it is, slut. So this is a menu. Not much to choose from here. It's gonna get on over to travel to the island. I'll be honest, this is the most exciting intro I've ever seen to a beach volleyball game. You got submarines, rockets, fucking spaceships, magic satellite beams. What the hell is happening? This, however, is looking significantly better. We have several amazing athletes here to choose from, from various nationalities around the world. How old are you, bitch? How old are you? You give me the fucking month and the day, but not the year. What is that shit? You gonna pull some fucking Chris Hansen shit on me? Tomato juice. Your fucking, your fucking favorite food is tomato juice? It's not a fucking food, lady! It's a beverage! 18 years old, 5'3", 108 pounds, but most importantly, her hobby is cooking. So you're gonna get dinner. Alright, this is, uh, this is the game so far. This is the first thing we're seeing. Some naked chick on the beach. Look at her fucking ass crack. What the hell is she even doing? She's just sitting on the beach. You giving the fucking seagulls a show? What are they, dropping bird shit on you instead of dollar bills? Oh my god, I became partners with Lisa. Life partners? You serious? That's fine. I'll do it. I'm in! And we're fucking going shopping now. Like, are you serious? This is how they get you. I buy a game that's got a bunch of scantily clad women in their bikinis on the cover, and the first fucking thing I do is I go shopping. God damn it. Oh, the pink lily. No, no, the yellow hibiscus. My God. How am I fucking going to choose which flower I want to wear? They sell all sorts of stuff that will come in handy during your vacation. They sell like a dildo? Some of the things they sell are kind of weird, though, so be careful. It's a dildo. $2,300 for a glass of orange juice? Let me tell you this. If you visit an island that's filled with nothing but half-naked women that are running around playing tug-of-war and bouncing on trampolines and splashing each other in the water, and you buy an Xbox, then you, sir, are a goddamn asshole. All right, let's be honest. It was a good buy. I just said yes to something. I don't know what it was. And judging the game I'm playing, it was probably to, like, take my clothes off for a very small amount of money. They're going to film it. That's fine. But I'm going to be famous. That's what the guy kept telling me. All right, this is okay. This is improving. This is get stretch. You know, you got to stretch before you work out. Okay, this this game is good so far. I'm uh, I'm enjoying it far more than I thought I would. Oh, oh, hello, hello. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my God, she's talented. Look at the talent. Finally, we get past all the bullshit and we get down to hardcore gameplay because that's what it's all about. Doing shit like this. 
Oh my god, did she smack her ass? Holy shit, did you see the right one? Oh my god, the left one too. So the next event is pool. pool is okay, this ought to be good. Can you swim? Oh, I can, can swim, can baby. I bet you can too. Let's fucking go splash around in the water. Oh, I hope they don't get wet. God, I hope they fucking get wet. What the f- What am I doing? Oh, I'm in the water. What? 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 Well, now I just look fucking foolish. She fucking jumped right in the water like a stupid bitch. She's been drinking too much. She's fucking wasting on margaritas and Hawaiian volcanoes. I just fucking lost hopscotch in a fraction of a second. I'm gonna fare in volleyball. I do want to see them jump up and down. Alley-oop! I feel like, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna hit the B button. NASCAR. In the first segment on lap 15, Tony Stewart with an aggressive move creating a seven car wreck remember just 19 cars starting the sprint unlimited the gen 6 car in its first race and drivers taking out included jeff gordon denny hamlin jimmy johnson and your segment one winner was tony stewart but then an aggressive move later yeah he's coming off turn turn four here you can see Dell jr moves low on Logano and Tony Stewart runs out of room and gets all over Dale Jr. Look at him, he's into the side of him, and you know we're riding along with him here, never lifted off the gas. They, you said you don't need any credit, it's a good thing Tony used <laughs> all his up. And at the end of segment two, your segment leader is Kevin Harvick. And as we welcome you back with Michael Walter, Chris Myers enjoying the race, the Sprint Unlimited, Brad Keselowski, and you at the beginning of the pre-race show mentioned Harvick and Stewart, the aggressive drivers in the Gen 6 car. With 12 drivers remaining and 20 laps to go, they're the guys to beat. Absolutely. Well, I love what I see in this Gen 6 car, and that is the same old thing you always see in racing, or you should see in racing. Aggressive drivers are being rewarded. They're driving to the front. And Tony Stewart, Kevin Harvick, they're aggressive, and they love Daytona. You know what I love? They get in the line, but they don't stay there. These cars spread out. They're able to make moves, and it's going to be a fun race to follow to the finish. You talked about Tony Stewart. We've seen how fast he was. Also, Kevin Harvick. But there's also guys laying there. Joey Logano is one of them that I've seen. is has a really fast car. So uh, this thing's far from over. Three of the last four events here have been decided on a last lap pass. So that's one thing to stay tuned for also. And I know Brad's been waiting all night. And we thank the fans for having voted at NASCAR.com uh, slash uh, Sprint Unlimited. But your voting is all in, but we will reveal the outfit, the fire suit for Miss Sprint Cup. NASCAR's red carpet, here it comes. Uh, I'm perplexed, I like them all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meanwhile, we have 20 laps to go and we're gonna check in. Is Steve Burns ready with Dale Earnhardt Jr.? Steve Burns is ready with an update on the 88 car, Steve. Well, Chris, at the break, Dale Earnhardt Jr. says the engine sounds a little bit sick, but it, sick, but it hasn't lost any power. I checked with the crew. They said the gauges all look good. And also, there's no tire rub on the left rear of the 88. Let's go to Jeff. Information. Steve, a lot of talk about what's going to happen in these final 20 laps. And we've already seen one big crash. And I think Darrell Waltrip said it best. I don't think the crash is done yet. And the reason for that, and when everybody thinking about there's going to be more crashes, Hendrick Motorsports is prepared. They have five body plates back in Charlotte, and they are ready in case they tear up any more race cars. The 48 and the 24 are already on their way back to Charlotte and will be back down here as backup cars for the Daytona 500, guys. We have seen some wrecks, but tonight here, the pushing really hasn't caused a wreck. No, we saw a good push at the start of the race. A couple of guys got a break on the field, but since then, no one's really teamed up yet. Oh, it's early, Michael. It's, it's coming, right? It's really early, and it's definitely coming. What you're seeing is to make moves, you have to side draft, which is basically where you're running cars right up tight to each other and pull away. To beat that, Michael, you know this, I know this, but for the fans at home, you have to push draft. And the more aggressive you are, the better that's going to work, and the more able you are to wreck as well. And Daryl, uh, he says it's early, but it's it's late in this, our final 20 <laughs> laps. It really is, Chris. And, and this is the you're probably going to tick somebody off segment. Sure. Because this is when you're going to do whatever it takes to win this race. This is for all the marbles. This is the showdown right here. Well, in segment one, Matt Kenseth and Tony Stewart were class of the field. Segment two, Kevin Harvick was hard to handle. Who's going to come out of the pack and surprise us in segment three? Well, I agree with what Michael said. I keep watching those two Fords back there, Greg Biffle and Joy Logano. But with 20 laps to go to get the victory lane, all these drivers, they have four fresh tires. I would say of the 12 that's out there, all of them believe <laughs> they can go to victory lane. Ready to go for 20 laps in the final segment of the Sprint Unlimited. Field comes out of turn four. 12 remain of the 19 starters. Here's what I believe. I believe that 14 and a 29 get together and they can work together. 
That's the winning combination. Harvick elected the outside. Biffle the inside. Stewart pushing Harvick. Logano pushing Biffle. Here we go. Yeah, Matt Kenseth in at 20. He was pushing Tony Stewart in the 14 as well. You see Biffle getting up there. He, he knows he's in trouble. He's want to try to squeeze in right here behind Matt Kenseth if he can, or he's going to go way no, back. No, that hole filled up. Casey yep. Kane. Or excuse me, Carl Edwards right there. I just believe those two cars are 29 and 14. I know Matt's fast. We'll see what he can do with these guys. Look at the run that Matt Kenseth in that 20 car got. He just drives by Kevin Harvick there. Not quite. He drives up to him, and it kind of like he hits that where, uh, arrow of uh, wall of air and it slows him right down. But boy, he really flexed his muscles there going off into that corner. I'll tell you what, I've got, got to be pretty impressed with that 29, Kevin Harvey. He led him to the checkers in the last segment. He's right back at it. It's going to be hard to handle. Harvick, Stewart, Logano up top. Matt Kenseth on the bottom. He's got Greg Biffle with him, then Truex and Ambrose. Matt Kenseth needs somebody to help him. He needs another, he really needs another Toyota to get up there and help him. But you got to remember something, those two guys at 20 and a 16, they're teammates from last year, and they're still good friends. He keeps trying to chip away at it at the bottom, Daryl. It, it's really who can, who can get up there and help. If Tony can stay up there with a 29 and help, great. If Matt can stay, if a Biffle can stay with Matt, great. Krista? Well, one thing Matt Kenseth said before this segment started, his car needed a little more grip. He was mostly loose, but not bad. He just came on the radio and said, I had to take a shot at the lead. Get me back in line when you can. Looks like the only space in line is going to be at the front. Here comes Kenseth again with a big run into turn number three. He comes dead even with Harvick. Can he get further? Not this time. He's got to have some help, Mike. He's got to have that 16 car of Biffle get up there and help him if he's going to break through that air, uh, wall of air. And, Daryl, it's almost like he's so strong that he keeps pulling away from Greg Biffle in the 16. Saw Biffle. I don't, uh, Biffle doesn't have a bad race car. He's got a pretty decent car, but he can't quite keep up. Harvick, a two-car length lead. Stewart. A car length back on the outside. Wow. <laughs> Joey Logano's four, third on the outside. Casey Kane, the blue car. Fifth on the high groove. Then Eric Almirola in the 43. And every guy right here, all 12 of these guys, they're all thinking about a strategy. What, what am I, what, what am I going to have to do in order to get to the lead and win this race? Coming around to complete 59 of 75 laps time for the first 2013 NASCAR on Fox crank them up. to go that's what a sustained 8500 rpm sounds like a guy tweeted me he said look my wife's out of town a bunch of guys in the basement watching the race can you crank it up for us <laughs> well there you have it <laughs> 15 laps to go